Hey everybody, how you doing today? I hope you're having a good Saturday. We are working on this pastel painting. We're just going to continue today for a real solid hour. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We're just going to continue developing this technique of doing an India ink underpainting and going over it with pastel to create amazing color. So I'm excited to share this with you. And let's see who we have here today. So John, how you doing? John Payne from upstate New York. And we have the nameless subscriber. How are you from Cali? It's good to see you. Hope everyone is having a uh, very good week. I kind of uh, cut it close today. I had to get coffee creamer, had none, and was not going to deal with Sunday without coffee. So that wasn't happening. So I had to make a run, a mad dash to the supermarket and get that taken care of. So here we are, and let's see, that's only two people. Well, that's cool. So two people will have all their questions answered really fast. So, so glad you are here. And let's see what we can do here. Let's see. I get my reference out of Katya. Here she is. Bring her over here. Okay. So, hey Alexis, how are you today? Good to see you. Marshall, how are you? So glad to see both of you. So I'm so glad you're here. So now I'm just going to add a little bit of color. You see right now I have this kind of uh, dark magenta. And I'm going to add that. Oh, well, I understand you're busy, Alexis, and every time that you can make it, I'm really happy. John, how's it going? Good to see you. So glad you're here, sir. Thank you so much. And, of course, we have our packing peanuts, and I'm just going to kind of blend in this ear here. With pastel, you know, you have to... Do some blending especially on a rough surface like this so you're not going to want to leave it uh, kind of with that surface showing right hey Colette how are you good to see you and so um, nameless says coffee makes me mad dash to the toilet <laughs> and so the thing is, you're at a point in your life where you need the boost, don't we all, my friend, right? Definitely. Some days, usually around 4 o'clock, it gets really bad, you know? I definitely need uh, a pick-me-up, you know? Hope I'd rather have a better pick-me-up than coffee, if you know what I mean. Uh, Colette says, Marshall, I wonder what that would be like. Um... Oh, Marshall says he's trying to get his life together. Uh, I think you're doing great, Marshall. So, I, I, I think your life is together. So, I am going to take a slight break to make a cup of hot chocolate once the kettle goes off. You know what I always do? I always seem to make the eyebrows a little smaller. Always done that. So I have to be conscious, conscious of that. So you see, I always, always do that. Now I can come here and go dark and then lighten them up. So that's no problem. Ah, oh, no problem. You know, we all need positive reinforcements and encouragement. We have to encourage each other. I am going to talk amongst yourselves and make my hot chocolate.
That wasn't too bad, was it, guys? That was pretty good. Okay, so let's get down to business. All right, so I have my hot chocolate. All's right in the world. Yeah, right, but that part's good. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, thank you, Colette and, Ma and Marshall. I appreciate that. So what I'm going to do is kind of make these uh, little hairs have highlights and make them turn. And get a, I think I need a lighter color. What do you guys think? Maybe a lighter color would be better. There we go. Let's zoom in and show you what I'm doing. Remember with hair, you always start with the, the forest and then you go to the trees and then you go to the leaves. So right now you see I'm just giving some highlight to those hairs. Hey Steve, how you doing? Great to see you, sir. Oh no, you're right on time. So that's great. So today I just finished an airbrush painting, a nude. And then now I'm switching over to pastel. And it's interesting working on two different mediums in the same day. You, it's almost like you have to split your mind. It's almost like speaking two different languages, you know? Those who are bilingual know what I mean. How, you know, you kind of change the way you're thinking. And it's interesting. Hey, Mr. Leahy, how are you, sir? Good to see you. So glad you're here. And we'll just come over here. And so the whole thing about, about this is uh, we want to create a sense of playfulness with this so I'm going to be a little looser because of her pose right it's it's young it's it's energetic and I want to have that feel about it David Fury how you doing David Fury good to see you And everything is subject to change. We're just kind of finding ourselves with this painting. And we'll come in with this. See, this is sort of like a flesh color. I would say it's a dark Indian red. It's 1122-186. And I kind of like that. So I'll just come over here and kind of do this half shadow underneath her, her chin. And then her sternocleidomastoid. And then let's deepen this. There we go. And... Ah, oh, doing okay, David. Always good to see you. So cool. Let's see, and come over here. It's a little bit darker here, so I'm going to use this color right here, which is a, I say it's a, a raw umber, but the number here is 176. And what I'm going to do is little circular movements here, and I'm just going to give a little more substance to this shadow here.
gets darker over here and it's darker over here so let's make this happen so little by little she gets more and more in focus and that's how I look at my technique in pastel hey Raul how you doing good to see you and Marshall says he'll double check his settings and okay cool right here as well and again remember what I was saying before the hot chocolate was ready that I do have times when I make the eyebrows a lot smaller I've always done that ever since I was a kid so I don't know but I always you know look out for that we always look out for the proclivities that we do you know we have to fight that ah thank you I appreciate that David thank you Hey, David, for the super chat. Thank you, Mr. Fiore. I appreciate that so much. Thank you, thank you, sir. That helps a lot. That really does. It helps uh, both uh, financially, of course, and also helps keep the channel going. And... You know, so I have uh, not a new lens, but this lens here I purchased for vlogging. It's a 10 to 18 lens, and uh, it's great, but I found out it's actually much better for vlogging. I mean, much better for these videos because it's a super wide angle, and I'm able to, you know, really show you different angles a lot better than others. See, I can zoom in. I mean, zoom out, I can zoom in, I can actually go really super close with this. I mean, it's unbelievable. So, yeah, so, you know, any kind of donations, uh, buying of the artwork, Patreon, uh, Super Chat stickers, uh, taking the classes, all help me to keep this, keep this going. So, thank you, thank you, thank you. So you can see the roughness of this paper. It's not paper, it's actually wood panel, uh, masonite, and it has my marble dust mixture, which is marble dust, gesso, and water blended, and then applied with a roller several times and sanding in between. So it's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. It is very Wednesday night-ish, Steve. Definitely. And uh, thank you again, David. I appreciate that, sir. Thank you. Two Super Chat stickers. Thank you, sir. Wow, that's exciting. I appreciate that so much. And so uh, I am very encouraged. Thank you, sir. Today's been a very hard day in the studio. Been working on two paintings, getting ready for the live stream, all of that. And uh, it's just, uh, you know, it's great to have encouragement because in the studio we're all by ourselves, you know, at least I am. I live by myself, so um, my encouragement comes from you guys. So I really appreciate that. So right here it's uh, really dark and well not really dark but relatively dark right here I'll zoom out see right here on her sternocleidomastoid here so we're just going to really pay attention to this right Just like when I'm working in 
an airbrush. I'm not thinking about being done. I'm just thinking about the process. And by working with the process, everything seems to come together, you know? A little sip of the hot chocolate. Yes, definitely. Encouragement is definitely important. Yes. Let's see. And... Go back to the right screen here. Let's see. There we go. Okay, cool. And of course, we have our packing peanuts. And I love art supplies that are inexpensive, right? So we can buy more. So here we have this shape here. And we're going to, you see, I move around a lot. And so right here. This shape over here, we're going to bring this in. We want to be true to the anatomy, to her anatomy. And then here we have a buildup of light. See, because the light is coming from in front of her, above, and slightly to the right. So you can see that her deltoid here is actually, let me move me out of the way. Move me over here. Yeah, so we're working on her deltoid right here. And it's a pretty hot light over here because it is getting quite a bit of front facing to the light. So now I'm just trying to sculpt the light a little bit on her. Oh, thank you, Colette. I appreciate that. And you can see I can use these little circular motion here just to kind of glaze over. And remember, there's no such thing as blue shift when you're doing the pastels correctly. I did. I sketched her out and then I sprayed a, uh, a sepia underpainting. Uh, this one I use a combination of sepia inks and uh, Createx. It was a combination. I actually painted this about two years ago and I never really completed it. So it was still in its uh, underpainting stage. So I was like, yeah, this would be a great idea for the first in my series of pastel paintings here on YouTube. Ah, uh, take care, Marshall. Always a pleasure, my friend. Now I'm just setting up because I am going to go ahead and blend in a bit, but Tim's got time. Mm. 
see the circular motions here. And you see, I could really sketch out, be more like a sculptor. And that's basically what I'm doing. And we can kind of work out some more of these kind of negative spaces in here. See how the hair is visible? Sort of like leaves of a tree uh, is visible. And you see through the tree, you can see part of the sky. That's kind of what's happening here. Many times the adjacent shape describes the form even more so than the form itself. So always remember that. See how I'm making her hair a lot, the shape of the hair a lot more interesting by working on the negative shape of the hair. And so now let's look at the nostril here. There's a little bit more. Hey, hey Zeus, great to see you. How are you, sir? Let's work on her nostril area. Like you see how rough everything's looking? It's going to smooth out, trust me. But we're going to get some layers down before we actually go ahead and uh, do some blending. So I am using Pit Pastel and Pit Pastel is a great brand. Uh, there's a 60 piece set for around a hundred dollars. I do recommend getting that at Amazon. Also, there's a credit color set and, uh, they are right here, fine art pastels and they are great. They're less expensive. I think they're 72 for around $72, but don't quote me. Uh, so let's see. Ah, doing okay. Thank you, Jesus. I appreciate that. So Dave Fury says, what camera am I using in software for live streaming? Never wavers. It's steady and good. Oh, well, my setup is really uh, very complicated, but I'm happy to share it with you. So the program I use is a program called... Uh, what is a program called? Splitcam. Splitcam is free, but it's a little more difficult to master than other other uh, programs. My camera is the Canon SL2. It's a really incredible video camera. I have a Canon EFS 18, um, 10 to 18 lens on that, so that enables me to have the really uh, good uh, good range. And then I have a really good tripod that actually has an L, L bracket so I can 
have this go overhead. Then I have a second camera, which is the Logitech, I believe the 920. And then I have another camera besides that. I actually have several cameras, but lately I've been simplifying it, not going with too many cameras, uh, just for personal preferences. And, uh, but yeah, you know, definitely play around with it and tweak things, right? But if you're going to do live stream, it's always best to know the software because that's going to give you much more wiggle room. You know what I mean? So that's very important. And it doesn't really waver because the, the tripod is actually not connected to the table. So even if I moved, uh, if I moved the table, it might shake a little bit, but it really is very sturdy. Uh, you know, it's just about, about four years ago, I decided, no, about three years ago, I decided that no one was doing live streams and I was going to concentrate and try and do the best live streams possible. So that's basically how that came to be. Let me get some of my packing peanuts here. Oh, oh. oh there we go. Pull this over. Hey, what's up there, Tone? Good to see ya. How are you? So live streaming is an art form in itself because you have to do everything. If you're if you're living by yourself and you're by yourself like me, you have to be technical support. You have to be you have to be the talent. You have to be the sound guy. You have to be the picture guy. So it's really difficult and it can get very discouraging to say the least. Ah, glad you're working hard, sir. That's not bad. Uh, as long as you're enjoying working hard, that's all that matters. And I'm going to come in and soften that. But right here, if I want to blend it, but I don't want to... Uh, I want to keep it on the dark side. I'll just use less pressure. And as I go higher, I want to keep it on the light side. I'll give more pressure. See that? So that worked out really well. And Mr. Mr. John Payne is back. So cool. Raul says, curiosity got him. He noticed that the point on the pencils, what sharpen allows you that kind of point without breaking? That is a gift that I got. That is the, where's the box? I had the box. Let's see. It is the AFMAT, AF10, I believe. So I think it's the AFMAT, no, AFMAT PS10. You can get that on Amazon. And it's a great one. It really is. I mean, pastel pencils still break, but as far as, uh, uh, you know, sharpeners goes, it's fantastic, I have to say. You know, so, uh, Nameless said you got to remember to keep your audience engaged. I think that's important to a certain extent, but I really think that you just have to be yourself and your audience will find you. Never placate your audience. So always, always have your, you know, your live stream go your way, meaning that you will, uh, you know, stick to your guns and your vision, regardless of what anyone else is doing, regardless of what is happening around you, just stick to your guns, right? It's so important. And there's going to be challenges and there are going to be times when your live stream is going really well and you have a lot of people and then all of a sudden there'll be times when all of a sudden there's nobody or hardly anybody and when that happens you have to stick to your guns but also ask yourself okay what's happening is it something you're doing is it something that's happening in the audience whatever it is then you just, you know, you just ask yourself, is there anything you could do 
to make things better within the realm of your own philosophy and your own convictions. Okay. That is so important. And so you see how... Ah, oh, thanks. So Mr. Payne says everyone to hit the like button. I appreciate that, sir. So the reason I'm doing these Saturday night live streams is because I want to show that pastels, you can do pastels over your airbrush paintings by by using these pastel pencils and they don't cost an arm and a leg and so I want everyone out there who hasn't used pastels or haven't used pastel in a while and are airbrush painters to go ahead and explore this believe me you'll thank me because it's addictive pastel are like with color, they're like extensions to your fingertips. And so that's something to really think about. Down the line, I'm going to be expanding my Patreon where I will be sharing like really deep diving into pastel. I've been a, a signature member for about 15 years, the Pastel Society of America. And so, I do know a lot about pastels and so I will be doing things just for the Patreon members and so I'll still be doing these because I always love helping everyone out and this of course is no cost but if you want a deeper dive into pastels and pastels with the airbrush definitely Patreon is the way to go it helps out the channel gives you access to videos I'm gonna be doing weekly videos uh, that are going to be available just for you, which is great. And uh, let's do some more negative space here, right here. some negative space and let's come over here there we go so right here we do have a couple of hairs over here so let's bring this over And like I said, it's like an extension of your fingertips. So remember, you're working in color, but you're not using any mediums or liquid. It's just pure pigment with a little bit of binder. So if you ask me, it's the purest form of painting. Oh, hey, Colette, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate that. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much for your support and encouragement, Colette. It means the world to me. I just want you to know. And so I'm excited. And I'm excited to uh, go back into pastel publicly. Uh, it's been kind of under the radar lately. I just wanted to get established as a, an airbrush artist for the past, I would say, five years. So the pastels have been on the DL, even though I've been painting in pastels for over 30 years so but you know it's like Rocky you know you you know you fight with the left hand but all of a sudden you can hit them with the left and you know so you always want to here's something that is a good thing so for those of you out there who are artists and I know most of you are and you're developing and learning how to be a painter. One of the things is I want you to think about how will you differentiate yourself, 
right? Think about it. What are what is it about you that you can differentiate yourself from other artists? And this is a personal decision, right? And this is something that um, I tell my students as well. You know, what what do you bring to the table that nobody else can? Whether it's, you know, what you did in your career before you started painting. Uh, could be your favorite colors. It could be your nationality. It could be a lot of different things. And I think it's important to, to explore that because, I mean, that's our identity, right? And your painting is part and an extension of your identity. So you definitely want to ask yourself that. And that's something I always ask myself. You know, what do I do as an artist to make me stand out, right? And, and that's a personal decision, and, and that's part of your convictions and everything. So we don't want to be carbon copies of anybody, even if we admire them. We still want to do their own thing. I studied with Harvey Dinnerstein, the most amazing painter ever. And I was going down the road where I was like a junior Harvey, you know, my work was very much like his and, you know, I was a scholarship student doing very well in his class for three years. And then I decided that, you know, I don't want to be Harvey, I want to be me. And so I started going my own way and that was crucial. It was so important for me. To do that and it made all the difference and it would have been an easier road to follow Harvey's footsteps steps because he was I was his number one student I know that at the National Academy at the time but I also know that it would have been an easy route to just follow along and just go along that route but the right road is oftentimes not the easiest so remember that, you know, you only get one go round and you definitely want to paint for yourself and that's really so important. I love Harvey. Harvey is amazing. He's my mentor uh, in my life and uh, just totally amazing artist and every day I am affected and influenced by his teachings and I am blessed to ever be called his student but I did make the decision to go my own route and to follow my own voice you know uh, Harvey Dinnerstein D-I-N-N-E-R-S-T-E-I-N -E -E I'm gonna use the little boys room I'll be right back guys talk to much yourselves
Okay, I am back. And so let's see. Unity is strength. How you doing? Good to see you. How are you today? So we were talking about um, uh, basically um, finding your own voice. And I want to hear your own thoughts. So what are some of the things that you guys and girls would like to paint and maybe you're not doing that yet maybe you're trying to get the skills to do something what are some of the directions that you might like to go in the future I would love to hear hey Sorosid haven't seen you in a while how's everything good to see you I believe you're from Scotland is that correct you're in Scotland currently let me see if I got that correct Sometimes I have a good memory. Let's see if it tonight is one. Hey, Kawain, how you doing today? Good to see you. So, Kawain ordered the Extreme Patriot Arrow. That will be going out Monday, my friend. So, I'm excited to uh, get that out to you. So, that is so great. And I want to thank you for that honor, Kawain, for... Uh, purchasing the customized Extreme Patriot Arrow. Thank you. Oh, Jesus wants to do portraits of his mom and family and a few more. That's great. So I know you're going to do a great job. So, uh, and uh, Jesus is part of my mentorship program and he is doing amazing. His work is really exciting. Sky's the limit for him. So that is so great. Uh, thanks, Jesus. I appreciate that. And uh, thank you. Thank you so much. That is so great. You guys are all so amazing for, you know, tr you know, trusting me to make those airbrushes for you. And uh, I believe in them and I use them all the time. So, uh so I'm so glad that, you know, I'm able to share that knowledge with you all. And not have you pay all that money for a customized, uh, a custom micron, you know. Uh, that's not, it, those are great airbrushes, but they're not the only way to get great detail, you know. And plus with the Extreme Patriot Arrow, it's such, so less expensive, you know. And... You see, I can just tap that, right? Just tap it. And these are inexpensive, so you draw them away, you get another one. Because you never want to use one over and over again, because what happens is you'll just uh, kind of muddy up the surface. And you don't want to do that. Oh, I love the way her lips are coming out. I'm getting, I'm putting more strong pigment, even more than I see in the painting. And, oh, thank you, Colette, says her hair is coming out fantastic. I appreciate that. Jesus says, thanks, Tim. Uh, great teacher. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. And, and, oh, with the customized Extreme Patriot Arrow. Thanks. And I really appreciate that. So many of you out there uh, use the Extreme Patriot Hour. And what really makes me happy is that many of you, uh, m a lot of you use it almost all the time. So that makes me happy. And I've sold it all around the world. And I mean, just sold one to a good friend in Italy, Bosnia, England. France, Germany, Austria, Australia. I mean, it's so cool. So that is really neat. Ah, oh, thanks, Queen. Queen says she's coming together. I appreciate that. Thank you. I, I, I'm really having fun. Pastel is like an extension of your fingertips. I, I mentioned earlier, and it's really true. You know, it's just. Well, I've been doing this for so long. It kind of. 
just as second nature right now. And so I like being able to share this technique with everybody. And so that's really cool. And if anything looks like a little too bright, you can always just calm it down with a darker color. And so even though the color in the painting, in the photograph, uh, it's a little too on the pinkish side. So I'm just going to come over here and just calm this down a little bit. There we go. Thanks, Jesus. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, sir. So you can see um, the thought process is fast, right? And we're just moving about quickly. And over here. And it's great because you can glaze in all these different colors here. And you can see as we're going how how things are getting much more sophisticated as far as the shapes and and the edges and the values within the shapes, which is really cool. So we can actually kind of focus in on certain areas, but only slowly. You don't want to do that prematurely. So it's great to see you, Sorset. And Sorset is from Scotland, so that's cool. So I did get it right. So good to see you. Have you been working a lot, Sorset? I haven't seen you in a while. Or life's just busy, right? That happens. So you see the sternocleidomastoid comes down here, this muscle, very important, goes from behind the ear, comes out, and attaches to the sternum and the clavicle, hence the name sternocleidomastoid. Behind the ear is a part called the mastoid process, so sternocleidomastoid. Remember that muscle, look it up study it it's a very important muscle if you're doing portraiture whether you're doing photography or you're doing uh, paintings or airbrush paintings with the figure you definitely need to know that muscle because that muscle is really important it's like it's it's such an important landmark like a three-way landmark right because if you don't get that right Sometimes when that's not painting correctly, it's really glaring, like, oh my goodness, you know, like, they'll look like a mutant if you don't get that muscle correct. So with the, the nude I did earlier, and so I'm kind of in uh, anatomy mode today, <laughs> for lack of a better term. So let's come over here and lighten this. So it's really cool. You can see how when we're working like this, she slowly comes together. But as we're moving about, right, back and forth and stuff like that. And uh, David says, sorry, had to bring in the groceries. What's going on? You're using a lot of big words. <laughs> now, you're not a simple person, my friend. Uh, but... Yeah, well, just basically David discussing, you know, the importance of getting the anatomy correct if you were working with the, with the human body, whether portraits or figures, male or female. We really have to at least have a working knowledge of anatomy, and uh, there's no way around it. Uh, we can't trust just our observation, you know. Let me sharpen this my tripod and my flash so I want to show you what I worked on earlier this is what I earlier worked on this is a 
an academic nude and this is done with airbrush and my airbrush india inks and you can see there's uh really hard to decipher it from a pencil drawing and that's important because with my ink you can get the most amazing blends you can get the finest lines you can see uh with a reference how big this head is look this is a penny so that's really tight so that's what you'll get with the extreme patriot arrow so you can expect to have using the inks and the extreme patriot arrow to have detail that you cannot get with anything else because it's straight out of the bottle right and you have the detail the light the medium and dark mixture as long as with the white mixture and it kind of comes together and the same thinking of me as a pastel painter is how i work as an airbrush artist it's about efficiency it's about precision and uh, so that's those are important considerations when working so whether you're working in pastel airbrush pencil precision is everything there we go ah oh, thank you steve i appreciate that steven is one of my students and he's in the uk very talented artist so I appreciate that so much, sir. So there's always one, more than one way to paint. When I'm doing pastels on my uh, own, I basically use the pastel palette method, which is something that I devised and, and perfected my own technique. And that is mixing the color on a palette before I put it on the, uh, on the surface here. But here you can see I'm actually mixing my colors on the surface. So this is, it's sort of an a la prima glaze. I know it's a contradiction in terms, but it pretty much is, a, you know, an a la prima with glaze. So how many out there are interested in uh, continuing to see how I combine airbrush and pastel? Just love a show of hands if you are enjoying this content and let me know. Just as for my own edification. So here I have a little bit of black and just getting some of these deep shadows, right? These deeper shadows here. And that's what we want to create. We want to create Oh, great. Jesus and, uh, and uh, David and Stephen, cool. Thank you so much. So, yes, I definitely will continue this content and gladly because I'm having fun as well, you know. And so we'll just continue bringing this. I think it's good because it's something that is not really being explored out there. And... And I don't think anyone has nearly the experience I have in pastel to pull it off. So this is something I'm definitely going to cultivate and uh, open up new worlds to you of expression. And I think that's what this whole series is going to be about on Saturday nights, you know. Thank you, Mr. John. I appreciate that. Yes, yeah, so I'm looking forward. So you can see how I can create depth by coming in with some of these deeper darks by just using black and the great thing about pastels I could just come in and go lighter and bring in and lighten up those blacks if I want how cool is that right and you can it's just really really amazing how we can really get a depth here with uh, with Katya Ah, thank you, Colette, and thank you, Raul. I appreciate that. It's a lot of fun. Plus, it's something very unique I can share with everybody. 
and that's exciting. So I can see here, let me come in with a kind of a dark umber here. And I see that there's this dark here comes over. We're just going to bring that over here. There we go. And the great thing is with pastel, you can erase, you could, you could scratch, you can do all of that. So how long am I on tonight? I'm just going to be on maybe for an extra 10 minutes because I did take the hot chocolate and I did take the bathroom break. So that's going to be cool. So I'll give you guys an extra 10 minutes. So I appreciate that. It's Saturday night. I'm sure everyone has, you know, things to, to do. Let's see. So there, this one right here is so we can definitely sculpt out this sculpt out this light here. So great question, Mr. Leahy says, how much would you expect to uh, pay for a good pastel starter set? See, that's why I actually started these live streams on Saturday, Steve, because you can get just the pit pastels, the set of 60, and then you could get, and I think that's a hundred dollars, and then a good complement would be these credit color ones, right? Let me zoom in for you. So you have these pit pastels right here, and I think a 60 set is a hundred, and I think a 72 set is like seventy-two dollars. And, you know, just following along on Saturday nights, that would really be great. So that, you know, and then as you are, uh, maybe, you know, you love it and you're like pastels is the way to go. And then you could slowly build up on it. You know, you can maybe get a set of Holbein's. Holbein's has a portrait set. I believe it's $172 for like 90 pieces. And then you could get variety of brands because each brand has its own own use right just like different airbrushes have their own use right so like the Vega for instance which is one of my favorite airbrushes it's great for backgrounds right the Omni Vega and this is uh, a Thayer and Chandler Vega this is really a wonderful airbrush and but I wouldn't use it for detail and then of course my extreme Patriot arrow that's for detail so same thing with pastels right so a hard pastel like a pastel pencil is good for the beginning but let's say if you're doing something more elaborate and you want to go softer then you would go with a Holbein or Winsor and Newton and if you wanted to go super soft you would go with a brand from France called Sennelier and that's like really rich in peg pigment. But I say all that to say this, start out slow with the pastel pencils and follow along someone like me who is uh, just doing an introduction live stream and you'll go far. And Whoop. See, the credit color don't sharpen as well. Uh, so you have to, probably with credit color, you have to use an X-Acto knife or a blade, right? And, ah, uh, Tone, take care, my friend. I hope you have a great night, sir. Pastels, you'll know within the first painting or two whether or not it's for you. And you will never leave it. Because, like I said, there's something about pastel, the immediacy of it, and just uh, the combination of doing a, an elaborate painting and a sketch. I mean, what a great combo that is, right? So... You'll know pretty quick whether or not it's for you. And um, so it's 
it's really nice because I see people who were oil painters their whole life and then they pick up the pastel and they don't look back and it's because it's it's just depend it has to do with your personality right the person's personality they might just want to uh, just work quick and the great thing about pastels everybody the cleanup the cleanup with airbrush is really quick as long as you you know stay on it airbrush is really easy oils is a pain in the neck watercolor is messy but pastel you just you put it away it's so simple it's it's so easy to do it's great and Jesus says use a blade my uncle would take a blade off that comes with the sharpen oh look at that that's pretty cool so that's neat so watch guys has um sculpting the hair right so it's not just the the hair but what's adjacent to it really helps describe the form of the hair so I'm coming in with this orangey color and little by little we're getting Katia here a very 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 talented piano player classical piano and uh, she does these pieces by Franz Liszt that are just out of this world and and uh, David says you always use uh, Canson paper even when you use pastel work or are you using different yeah I won't use the Canson paper for pastel because you need to have a pastel surface that is going to take many layers it is so crucial so you can't use anything like Bristol or color line paper or anything like that you need something with <coughs> a huge amount of texture so what I do is I use my own board and this this is uh, just a hard board that you can get from Dick Blick right and they're really inexpensive it's 11 by 14 I take the uh, gesso marble dust and water and I have my own formula and I put that together and uh, mix that up and then I apply it several coats and sand it in between and what you end up with is a surface that actually feels like bone right feels like cutler bone but the great thing about this surface is that I've never got to the point with my own surface where I ran out of tooth it oh I I've never been like oh I can't put any more pastel on it that's amazing pastel companies have not come out with a product like that yet I talked about Harvey Dinnerstein earlier this is a formula that goes from generation to generation of student to uh, teacher for generations and generations goes back to France if I do my artistic lineage of who I studied with who my teacher studied with their teacher goes right back all the way back to like path before the impressionist goes back to like Angra Jacques Louis David Nicolas Poussin so that's exciting so when you study with someone who has an academic uh, training like I do you're not only studying with them but you're studying with all their teachers and if you follow that lineage my lineage goes back to my favorite artist in the world which is Jean Augusta Dominique Angra 19th century French neoclassical painter his teacher Jacques Louis David another neoclassicist and then the teacher before him I think was uh, Boucher and just keeps going down down you know it's really exciting so as you can see my lineage I'm not an impressionist so my work my lineage does not go there if my studies went in that direction you might see me doing a, a an impressionist painting uh, <laughs> Jesus says now he's talking in tongues <laughs> Uh, this is actually uh, you can pick this up I'm going to show you so here's a six by six version and right here you can see this is hardboard panel 
This is six by six. I think it's like 90 cents. This is the side you you don't use. You use this side. And you do coats on this side. You do coats on that side. On my Patreon, uh, pretty soon I'm going to put a new video on how to actually go and uh, take care of this. Uh, how to make this. Because I revised my formula. So I'll be doing something like that. And... But this will give you a surface, no exaggeration, a surface that will uh, have unlimited, unlimited amounts of pastel. And that's something that none of the airbrush companies can, none of the, not airbrush, none of the paint companies out there, art supply companies can actually uh, duplicate. So that's pretty cool. So it's okay. Is clayboard okay without the clay? So it is clay board without the clay. Definitely, David. So Ambersand comes out with a, a product called past, uh, Pastel Board. <coughs> Too expensive. Uh, you don't have unlimited amounts of, uh, of, of pastel you can put on it. You're going to go broke. It's overly priced. And so stay away from Ambersand Pastel Board. Uh, so I do have another alternative if you are unable to get, I'm going to go get it. So hold your, hold that thought. This is the one thing I like by Ambersand. This is called the Value Series. Value Series. I mean, this is like the only value I think they sell. Um, so this is just a, a wood that has an acrylic primer on it. And it's more expensive, but not that much. And you can go ahead and put my marble dust and gesso mixture on this and be just fine. So, if you do see that at Hobby Lobby or Michael's, that's a good alternative. But here's another thing. Uh, you can take my marble dust mixture and you can... Let me zoom this out. Hi. You can take my marble dust mixture and put it on illustration board like I have here. And I did an airbrush painting on this. So, there's... You know, my marble dust mixture is not just for pastel painters. It's for airbrush. So, really cool. So, thought I would uh, share that with you. Blick is a great store. Uh, I do miss Pearl. That was great in the day. Those of you who remember Pearl Paint. In New York City, they had eight stories. Eight floors of art supplies. In New York City, in downtown, which is uh, quite, get quite sad about that, you know. Oh, thanks, Jesus, I appreciate that, you know. So, you know, definitely you want to make your own surface. Number one, you want to take the money out of the art supply companies. You do not want them to get rich on you. So anything that we can do... <laughs> to stop having them fleece the artists out there that's what i am all for um i think what we do is is has such great value oh, i used to work at the perlin woodbridge oh so cool that is neat yeah you know i got turned down so i applied for the pearl paint when i was obviously i was Still at the academy and I applied at Pearl and they turned me down and then a couple of years ago I applied to Blick in Paramus and they did not hire me so I thought that was funny I mean I I have sponsorships with many of the brands that they're selling yet they decided that they did not want to hire me I thought that was hilarious but I think when you get older, it's kind of harder to get a job because they're kind of like, why does he need work, you know? And uh, 
So it is more difficult to get a job as you get older. Jesus says, I, I get to get lots of plywood and, oh, great. Oh, so you get that. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes. Make sure it's thin because what's going to happen if you use, as you know, if it's a big painting, that's going to be one heavy painting. It's actually going to fall off the wall. I learned the hard way. I used to get like real thick wood. But when I framed it, it was like super heavy. I was like, oh no, it was just not practical. So just be weary of that. Weary? Weary? I don't know. But yeah, watch out for that. And so yeah, we're just having a good time painting Katya. You know, it's a lot of fun. And I might continue with Katya maybe or start a new one next week. So every Saturday at 8 o'clock. Oh, you were manager of the framing department. How cool is that? So did you able to uh, frame your own artwork for, for free, I hope? And frame your friend's work? That would have been great. I did work at Michael's for a week. And that was uh, interesting. They wanted me to unload... Uh, three o'clock in the morning unload their trucks and I'm like don't you realize what you have here I'm someone who could help out your customers and you have me unloading a truck and then he the manager was telling me to cut the boxes because he wanted me to put all this crap on the shelves you know craps that say thankful and happy turkey day and all this like garbage and I'm putting it on the shelves and he's like He's like, no, you have to go faster with that razor blade, that box cutter. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what did you say? He's like, yeah, go faster like this. And I'm like, okay. And I said, I'm going to go home now, and then I'm going to call you. And uh, so he's like, what are you talking about? He said, I'll call you when I get home. And I'm going to leave now. And then when I got home, I was like, I quit. I am not going to cut my hand because you want crap on the shelves a couple of minutes faster than me cutting it at a normal rate. He's like, yeah, you know, but we, we don't want to lose you. And I'm like, you lost me. So that was pretty much that, you know. So Raul says he wasn't an artist at the time, only started painting. Wow, you're amazing. So that's fantastic. And one and a half thick, one inch and a half, that's pretty thick, my friend. That's going to be way too heavy. <laughs> but give it a shot. If you work small, you can do it. Uh, and uh, let's see. Stephen says, we had a place called Commercial Screen Supply that had the most amazing warehouse-style art supply section. Unfortunately, it took a hit from... Yeah, you know, back in the day, there was... Uh, I think it was Saddlebrook Art Supply, which is in Saddlebrook, New Jersey, and that was such a great place. But when I was 14, I lived in Astoria, 14, 15, 16. I lived in New York City, and on the main road, Steinway Street, was a frame shop, and that's where I got all my art supplies. And it was this uh, older gentleman worked there, and this young woman. Well, I was 14, everybody was old at that time, but... And I got all my Walter Foster books from there and my first set of art supplies and ink pens and all of that. And we always remember, you know, okay, so we love Blick and everything, but they did really kill the small art stores. And that's a shame. And hopefully that will come back because I don't know where I would be if I didn't have the small art store and those people who work there that encouraged me. And I remember when I was sick and in the hospital, they actually, you know, gave art supplies to my family to help me get back on my, you know, help me, encourage me to get back on my feet. So you're not going to get that from Blick, that's for sure. And so I understand what you're saying, Steve. And the shop up here where ours is, a young kid got his three fingers chopped. Oh, my God. How did he get his fingers uh, chopped off? The online markets are ruining everything. Don't get me wrong. I shop online 
for everything. I love to shop in person. You know, it's a double-edged sword, right? You know, Jeff Bezos, I used to work for him, but, you know, what's his motivation? Is it really to help the world? I don't think so with his uh, phallic-shaped rocket, you know? I don't think he really is, <laughs> you know, looking out for anyone except for whatever weird ambition he has. So it's a shame, you know, we need, if I had an art store that was right by my house, I would go there, but I don't, you know, but it's too late now, it's over. And, um, you know, and now with the pandemic and, you know, is it over? Is it coming back? Those are questions that, you know, we have to ask ourselves. So guys, I just want to say thank you for hanging out with me today. I appreciate it. So this is where we are with the beautiful Katya. I love it. I think uh, I'm having a lot of fun. You can see how the under underpainting is almost gone. It's just pure pastel now. When I come back, I'm going to work in the surface here. This is still just uh, panel, right? So I'm going to bring in the background. And then we're going to work out the hair and really get the flow even more. We're pretty close to being completed with her, right? And, you know, once we work on the hair and everything. So lots and lots of fun. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate you all. Thank you for the super chats, uh, the super stickers. You guys are amazing. And so David and... Uh, David and uh, who else? Colette. And let's see who else gave me. So David twice and Colette. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. And thank you for hanging out with me. This was a very successful live stream. Thank you, Mr. Steve. Thank you, John. Great to see you guys. So this Saturday thing's a thing, right? So, uh, and I'm really excited. Happy Mom's Day to all you moms out there and to your moms and your wives and everything and your sisters. God bless you all. And I will talk to you soon. See you Wednesday, 930. New, new painting coming up. So that's exciting. See you guys.